Coming up on Hands on iOS Home Edition, I am going to tell you about family sharing, an incredibly powerful feature that, frankly, most people should probably use. Hands on iOS is brought to you from LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees? Well, LastPass can ensure that they are by making access and authentication seamless, whether they're working in the office or remote. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. This is Twit. This episode of Hands on iOS is brought to you by LastPass. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. All righty, folks, it's me, Micah Sargent, and I am here to tell you about a fantastic feature for iOS. It's called Family Sharing. And here's the deal. This is a tool that many people should be using, but a lot of people don't know about. I want to give a shout out to Patrick Delahanty, uh, who, of course, is the one who suggested this topic to me. And I am grateful because I had kind of forgotten about it. It does kind of exist in the background if you aren't maybe a parent or something like that. But you don't have to be a parent for this feature to work for you. This is a feature that can help you share your content with your family, with your acquaintances, whatever group you kind of want to set up. Of course, it requires trust and it requires uh, certain settings and things like that. So it's not for everyone. But if you are a part of a family and you want to get this set up, this is what you need to know about family sharing. So first things first, how do you get to the family sharing settings? Well, I'm going to show it to you on iPhone here uh, because that is the place where I do most of my sort of iOS settings adjustments and things like that. You launch the settings app, you tap on your Apple ID banner at the top, that's your name up there, and then you tap on family sharing. When you pop into family sharing, you can see that I've actually created a family. If you had not created a family, this is the place where you would go to do so. You tap set up family, and then Apple gives you a way to send a link to a family member who you would like to add to your family sharing plan. So here you can see that I am the main family member and Sebastian is one of the adults in my family sharing household, my partner is. And this right here is the big thing, shared features. You can share purchases, you can share iCloud storage, you can share location, you can share screen time settings, you can share Apple Music, you can share TV channels, you can share Apple Arcade, you can share Apple News Plus. Look at all this stuff. So I, and because I'm a ridiculous person who does this for a living, have a whole lot of content and subscriptions through all of these different platforms. And yes, I am subscribed to them, but why not share those with my partner? Why not give that opportunity for him to use them as well? So by creating a family sharing account, up to six people, Apple says from your household, so be clear there, can be in a family and only the organizer me, myself, and I can add family members. So I get to choose who I want to have in here. But uh, let's let's kick things off. So along with, with these features, uh, I wanted to mention that there's also a setup for a shared photo album, a family calendar, and find family devices by asking Siri to ping them or viewing them in Find My. So with location sharing features turned on, you can say, I want to find Bob, I want to find Sally, I want to find Lucy, and Siri can help you find those. So uh, along with the features that you see here, the shared photo album where you can post photos that you may take with the other person uh, are available there, and uh, as well as a shared calendar. So, you know, you've got events that the family are going to do. Apple makes it easy for those things to be synced. So let's dig into this. Well, we'll start by showing the process for adding a family member. Now, of course, I'm not going to be adding a family member uh, because this is all that I have right now, but you would simply tap on the add family member icon and Apple gives you three choices. You can invite via iMessage, you can invite in person, or you can create a child account. Now we're gonna talk about child children accounts in a moment, but I wanna start with the first two. Invite via iMessage offers up a link that you can then send to someone. So I'll type, I'll tap on that so you can see. Takes a second to chug and then boom, 
tap to view invitation. So this lets the person know, hey, you're invited to uh, this person's family so you can share music, movies, apps, iCloud storage, and more with them. They tap on that. It pops up the family sharing thing, lets them set that up on their uh, phone. So I'm going to hit cancel there just so I can show you what it looks like if you choose to invite in person. In this case, it pops up a prompt saying, go ahead and enter your Apple ID and password to join your family. Now, this is not going to be something that's then stored on your account or anything like that on your phone. This is simply a way for them to be able to log on and do it themselves. So it's as simple as that. At which point then the person will pop up in your account. So I'm gonna tap on my partner's icon here so you can see what the settings show. So purchases and music means that uh, Sebastian is using this account to share purchases with family and, of course, access Apple Music. So if he wanted to share his purchases and those, uh, that'd be apps and, and uh, audiobooks and things like that, then he would be able to do that there. And then I can, I have a toggle to turn on parent and guardian. So that is the option that says, hey, I want you to be able to control whether a child can make purchases uh, as part of the family. And then, of course, right there is the remove button. So it makes it very easy for you to take them out. Now, each of these settings can be turned on and off. And when you tap into them, you get a little bit more information. So purchase sharing is the first thing. This says, look, you can share everyone's purchased apps, their music, their movies, all of that without having to share an account. Now, when you tap set up purchase sharing, it says, okay, you're going to be sharing purchases made with, and then this person's account, in this case, mine. Family members will be able to view and download your purchased music, purchased movies, etc., and available content may, of course, vary by country or region. I tap continue, and then it says, okay, listen, as the family organizer, your payment method is going to be shared with the family members. So everybody in that account will have access to that shared uh, payment method. Now, that means that you are going to be paying for iTunes, for Apple Books, for App Store purchases, etc., and that you are, of course, will be responsible for the charges. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, this applies more toward a family situation where the, the head of household or heads of household may be the ones with the card and the kids can then uh, use that, that payment method. This episode of Hands on iOS is brought to you by LastPass. As you're preparing your remote workforce, it's important to keep security top of mind with aiding employee productivity. Transitioning to a full work-from-home environment can be complicated. LastPass is here to make the transition easier without decreasing security. LastPass enables IT teams to remain in complete control over which employees are accessing which resources, no matter where they are working, for unified visibility over access and authentication. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to find out how they can help you. That's lastpass.com slash twit. Then iCloud storage. This is a big one. And I mean that literally and figuratively and punnily. I've got a lot of storage, two terabytes of storage available, and I want to be able to share that. So this lets me say, okay, I've got all my data in the plan, and I would also like to allow whomever else I invite to my family to be able to use that storage space as well. So they can back up their files, they can keep their photos in the cloud, they can do uh, keep extra music in the cloud, etc. This gives your whole family access to that whole two terabytes of storage if that's the data plan that you have available. Next is location sharing, which, as you might imagine, lets you use the Find My app to say, yes, I want to follow locations uh, depending on who they are. So you can say, uh, as you can see, it shows that each location in Find My family or excuse me, in Find My and in Messages, it will appear there. So those locations are available for all the family members and lets you share the location uh, depending on where you are. So I'll tap not now on that as well. Then screen time. Burr, 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 burr. Screen time is a new feature in iOS that lets you choose to set limits on how much you're using different apps, different devices, different categories. And so with screen time turned on, you can control your children's screen time, view your children's screen time, see how much they're using their devices and sort of set up a group policy for all of those things. 
Apple Music, of course, lets you share your Apple Music subscription with the family, up to six people. So everybody does not have to have their own Apple Music account. It's just one, and that one subscription works for everyone. TV channels. So for Apple TV channels, these are TV channels that I am subscribed to. So Epix, HBO, Apple TV Plus, Showtime, and CBS All Access are different TV channel subscriptions I'm subscribed to within the Apple TV app. Anyone who is a member of my family then launching the Apple TV app on their devices can watch these channels as well. Apple Arcade is, of course, Apple's gaming platform. And so with that subscription, anyone in my family can download Apple Arcade games uh, for free as part of the, the subscription. And then last but not least, Apple News Plus. I am a journalist. I do have an Apple News Plus subscription. And so that allows folks to, anyone in my family, to be able to be subscribed to Apple News Plus as well. It's an incredibly powerful tool, like I said, because it opens up the entire family to all of these different options. That means that not everybody has to have all of their own personal subscription plans and things like that. You can just use it as a family, saving money, saving time, saving hiccups, saving headaches, etc. And that is, uh, that is exactly why you'd want to set up family sharing. Now, let's quickly talk about what a child account is and how it differs from a, an adult account, or in my case, the organizer of the plan. A child account, of course, is a little bit different from an adult or the organizer. With a child account, uh, you are saying that, yes, I give my child who is under the age of 13 permission to have an Apple ID, and this is the process by which it gets set up. So it is not a simple process setting up a child's account, uh, a child's Apple ID outside of uh, family sharing. But by using family sharing, you on your device as the organizer can create an account for your child and set that information up for them. Of course, that account can then turn into an adult account when the time comes, but for that period of time, it remains a child account. This means that you get to limit what content your child can access on the devices they're using. So there are restrictions and parental controls that you can put in place that are specific to those, those uh, particular accounts. Now, along with that is a feature called Ask to Buy. And Ask to Buy basically says, I need to be requested. I need to receive a request before I will allow my child to buy an app or buy, pay for an in-app purchase or some other option there. It's really handy. That way you don't get a bunch of uh, gems that you don't want in some game because of uh, an accidental purchase. So how does it work? Well, when the child goes to initiate a purchase on their account, on their device, it will then pop up a prompt, a push notification on one of the parents' or adults' accounts and ask, do you want to allow this purchase? You can either accept or deny. And at that point, the purchase will either go through or it will be denied. So it's a very handy way to make sure that, yes, occasionally those in-app purchases are available, apps are available that may cost, but they're not all available and they're not always able to take advantage of the purchase uh, and payment plan that's on the account. So that, folks, is a quick overview of family sharing on iOS and on macOS. It is a very handy way to share all of the content that you have. It's Apple Music. It's Apple News Plus. It's purchases that you make in the app stores and iTunes. It's so very much. And if you have a family and you are the one that uh, has the different subscriptions, consider taking advantage of, of family sharing, letting your family get access to uh, that iCloud storage plan, especially. I can think of a few family members who are a bit in need of a place to back up their iPhones and uh, maybe offload some of the photos stored on their devices. So this is a great way to take advantage of that. And I'm looking forward to sending out some invites to them. 
Thanks for tuning in to Hands On iOS, uh, again, at home edition. There will be loads more to see in the coming weeks. And uh, I do appreciate those of you who have put out some calls and requests for things for me to cover. It means a lot to know you're out there. If you have any other questions about family sharing, let me know. You can, of course, follow the show by subscribing on YouTube. That's youtube.com slash hands on iOS, or you can head to twit.tv slash HOI and subscribe to the show in its various formats. See you next time.